The manifestation in the Squatterman event is described all across the world. Emerging from this manifestation, the gods, the event responsible, is the event forgotten. The witnesses saw in the sky, and they weren't at war in the conscious sense that they were electrically exchanging activity. Wait till you hear this. All across the world we are divided culturally and religiously, but the irony of our faiths in each respect is that they are all mostly worshipping the same event. When Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn of the solar system were literally the gods in the sky, the religious pantheons of most of the world's religions are spawned from key components in the Squatterman event. As the witnesses watched, the great god whom once stood alone seemingly came under attack respawned and then multiplied. The age of the gods was the greatest known event in existence, and it's also the most secretive taboo subject in modern culture. Instead of embracing, they are trying to conceal this hidden truth. But these things that affect our planet so much cannot simply be expelled from our thoughts. This is a truth that must be known at any cost. Consider the anthropomorphic god Indra, Indra is the most important god in the Vedic religion, and he later became a major figure in Hinduism, an important deity in Buddhism, Cham, and in Chinese traditions. For the Aryas, he was their national god, who was regarded as a protector of the military aristocracy and the Kshatriyas warriors. The figure in the sky, they thought, watched over their existence. Key movements in the manifestation triggered these later thoughts, and the petroglyphs of India showed a squatterman field of view. The entire world watches as figures luck over our planet, radiating plasmatic energies over millennia. We don't know this today because we misinterpreted the writings that reach us. But the truth lies within these teachings, make no mistake. And the formidable, thunderbolt-wielding Indra strikes an imposing figure. But as king of the gods, he's generally benevolent. Being generous to his worshippers, guaranteeing peace and prosperity, and delivering beneficial rainstorms to end droughts. He can also be called upon in times of war to give support with his divine weapons and favourable interventation. In later traditions, Indra is transformed from a worship god into a mythical figure involved in adventures, whilst gods such as Vishnu and Shiva replace him at the head of the Hindu pantheon. Nonetheless, Indra continued to be associated with storms, rain, and the Cardinal Point East, a key component in the Squatterfield story. In the Hindu creation myth, Indra was born from the mouth of the primeval god or giant Purusha, whose various other body parts gave birth to other members of the Hindu pantheon. These new gods then brought order to the cosmos, and Indra, seated on his throne within the storm clouds of this Farga, or third heaven, as the ruler of the clouds and skies alongside his wife, Indrani. In Indian mythology, the clouds are equated with divine cattle, and the sound of thunder during storms is Indra fighting with the demons who are forever trying to steal these celestial cows. In addition, the rain is equated with Indra milking his divine herd, and the god is seen as protector of the earthly cattle belonging to his worshippers. Indra encompasses and controls the universe, balancing the earth in the palm of his hand and manipulating it according to his whim. And he also created the rivers and streams by shaping the mountains and valleys with his sacred axe. Sometimes Indra paid a heavy price for these amorous adventures. For example, on one occasion, he was cut into a million pieces and the gods struggled to put him back together again. When they finally managed it, they found a rather important piece of him missing and so were forced to complete this god using the member of a ram. This was a manifestation, as they saw it in the sky, eerily echoing other religious stories including the Osiris myth. For example, Indra is known as Sakra in Buddhism, and he rules the 33 gods. 
In Cambodian tradition, he is known as Pa En, the god of the sky, and he is the most important and popular of the gods. He is considered to live atop Mount Maru, alongside his servants the Yeeks, fearsome ogles with fangs and red eyes who can transform themselves at will. Into any shape they please, a very unstable event perceived in these terms, possibly for educating children in antiquity in the schooling systems, with this sort of storytelling. In the Cham religion of Vietnam, he is also the god of thunder and rides in a white elephant. In Chinese tradition, he is identified with the god Tai Shi, and finally, the god is still worshipped today in the Rajasthan region of India, in the festival of Indar Puja, which calls for rains to prevent the frequent droughts prevalent in the desert state today. Indra is frequently portrayed wielding a thunderbolt, known as the Vajra, but he may also be carrying the Chakra Discus, an Ankusa or Elephant God, and an axe, the Tanka. He is also shown riding his white elephant, Aravata, who was born from the churning of the seas when the world was created. And later on in Buddhism, the god's thunderbolt, the Vajra, becomes the diamond scepter, the Vajrayana. As the manifestation takes place in the sky, the thoughts of the observers manifest too. The stories are developed to remember, and religion begins here, as the survivors re-emerge to a different world than the one that had existed before the great figure in the sky went through something like a supernova event. When the unmoved mover, the giver of light, reacted cataclysmically with the other planets in the solar system. But what do you guys think about this one anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.